Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Leader Tree. I'm your host, Chris Miller, and we are going to continue our discussion on building business credit tonight. Uh, because last night, or not last night, but I should say uh, last week, <laughs> we had a discussion about credit bureaus and the business credit side and why it's kind of important to get yourself established. Now, let's find out what the benefits are of using business credit as opposed to personal credit um, for your business, okay? So, the first thing is, establishing business credit can really lend legitimacy to your business. That's the first thing right there. Because when you're doing business, especially if you're doing high-profile business like I do, right, the clients that you're working with, the prospects that you're working with, they want to check you out. They want to know that the company that they're looking to represent them uh, is a reputable company, right? So they're going to check you out. And the place they're going to do that, number one, is going to be Dun & Bradstreet. Just going to tell you up front, All right? They're going to they're going to type you in to Dun & Bradstreet, and they're going to find out about your business, okay? So that's important to have an account established with Dun & Bradstreet for that purpose, right? So if you haven't done that for your business, I recommend doing it. And refer back to last week's episode uh, at theleadertree.com. You can find it there in order to figure out how Dun & Bradstreet scores things, okay? So you understand what your scores mean when you get those scores. Because initially, they're going to be high-risk scores because Dun & Bradstreet doesn't know anything about you, as we as we said before, Okay? But there are certain advantages to doing this. One, it's going to lend that legitimacy to your business. And that is important. That is super important. I can't even begin to tell you how important that is. Because it'll make you money, right? Having a business that can be found, having a business that can be rated, having a business that can be trusted means money in your pocket, right? Having a business nobody understands uh, is real will take money away from you. Um, now, even in the in the beginning days of Factor Careers, I didn't do this right because I was like, I don't even know if this is really going to work. I didn't, you know, what I mean, so I didn't take the time and and make the effort to go out there and uh, and register my business with uh, with Dun and Bradstreet. So I didn't have a business credit profile. Uh, and I just basically did everything under my own name because it was a sole proprietorship. And, you know, until I knew that this business was going to function the way I wanted it to function, I didn't do any of that stuff. And it did it did cost me business on a couple of times because people would say, well, I can't find you, you know. And it's like, well, where are you looking? <laughs> you look under Google, you can find me. You know, it's like, well, I'm looking at Dun & Bradstreet and your company doesn't exist. You know what I mean? So. These things matter. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, so, it's very important to do them. There are other benefits to you for putting things in your business name, right? So, another benefit of building your business credit is being able to have things in your business name, right? It'll build up your business credit, uh, and it also shelters you, right? So, let's say, for example, you... Um, you know, you buy a house, right? And later on, your wife divorces you, right? Or your husband divorces you. Well, they can't take your house because you don't own it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, because the business owns it. Now, they could sue your business for it. Uh, there, there, are, there are loopholes that they can get access to. Um, but there are disadvantages, too, to buying property, in a business name too. For example, you'll have a higher tax bracket. Uh, you're going to lose out on the, the shelter of the capital gains, uh, which brings down the taxes. I know everybody thinks capital gains goes the other way, but it actually brings down your taxes. So um, it, it depends on how, how you do it. I mean, well, it, it let me let me say this. Capital gains can bring down your taxes, depending on how long you've held the asset. Right, because you could pay your regular income tax, or you could pay your capital gains income tax, and the capital gains is typically lower than the standard um, income tax rate, 
when it comes to long-term capital gains. Now, short-term capital gains is a different story. So keep those things in mind, okay? When you <laughs> when you go moving houses and selling houses and things like that, it becomes important to note. Um, but you don't have the benefit of that when you put it in the company name. So think about that too. It does shelter you from messy uh, personal life problems. But it also exposes you to certain things too, such as if your company gets sued for whatever reason, they can now attach uh, your property to that lawsuit because it's owned by that company. So uh, the better way, believe it or not, is probably not to put it in your company's name or your own name, but put it into a, a trust. Uh, let the trust buy it. And therefore, you still have control over it, but the trust itself owns it. You have the you have the shelter, but you you uh, you also have the ability to save on taxes, probably more so than uh, just individually. So there are there are ways to do that. I would consult with a uh, attorney on that before you make that decision if you're going to do it. Okay, so. Let's talk about company vehicles. There are some really cool things to do. Well, let's say, for example, I have a company and I'm a self, uh, uh, just a, just me by myself, and I'm out there and I drive, I, I do work, I do I do uh, personal business, I do everything with my one car that I own, right? So, um, if I have the company purchase that vehicle from me, right? Now it's a company-owned asset, right? The company can now write that off as far as the cost that it costs them to purchase it. They can also write off depreciation or mileage. So if you want to track your mileage and say, okay, this much went to my... Uh, went to my business, this much went to personal, and keep yourself a little running tally, <laughs> you yeah. know, hey, by all means, you can go ahead and do it the hard way if you want to, or you can just take a standard deduction for depreciation on it, uh, which is what I would do, and in fact, which, which I do, so, um, and then, then you say, well, Chris, I don't know how much I use um, for business and how much I use for personal because I can't, you know, I mean, I go out there and I, and I work and I, and I come home and I, you know, I go out to the movies with my family and I do all sorts of things. Well, you know what? Hey, slap a sticker on the side of that sucker. Uh, and it's always business use, right? Cause now you're advertising <laughs> everywhere you drive. So there are ways to get around those things and, and make them fit into your, into your, your purpose. For it. So that you can take the depreciation value. Plus, you can also cover. You can also deduct the um, expenses that your car costs you for maintenance and things like that. Right. So those are deductible then. And then on top of that, you can then qualify for um, commercial auto insurance instead of private auto insurance. Right. So you're you have personal auto insurance, which you probably already have, and then you have commercial auto insurance. Now, commercial auto insurance is better for you in many ways, right? Because one, there are no limits on payouts, right? To where if you look at your personal insurance policy, it'll be capped at certain numbers, right? Commercial policies don't include that. More importantly, if I'm writing on my taxes that I'm using my vehicle for business use, right? And... I get in a car accident while I'm off to the movies, right? Then maybe, maybe my personal auto insurance will cover that, right? But if they look into my taxes and they say, oh, well, he's using it all for for uh, business use, they also have the option to say, we're not going to cover that because it was for business use, okay? Because personal auto insurance policies genuinely do not um, cover business use, right? So, like, if you're going to and from your place of employment, 
yes, that's usually covered. But if you're running an errand, nope. If your boss says, hey, go to the supply shop and pick up these supplies that we ordered and you get in a car accident along the way, that's not that's coming out of your pocket because they're not going to cover that. Your insurance company will not cover that. So bear that in mind. A commercial insurance policy, however, will cover that, right? And it will take away the limitations on it too. So the, the downside to it is sometimes it is also a little bit more costly to get a commercial policy than not. However, do, 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 guess what? It's also a writable tax deduction. So you can deduct the money you spend on the commercial uh, insurance. So you see how this is starting to shape up in your favor. Okay? So that's important things to note. Now, when we get back, we're going to talk about some other uses of the importance of using and building up that business credit. Are you happy with your job? Is your boss giving you a hard time? Do you want to start a new career and make real money in the finance industry? We can show you how to work from home, no fancy math skills necessary, and be a professional factoring business broker. You can earn up to $20,000 in a single sale. Go to factorcareers.com. That's factorcareers.com to find out more. Hey, we're back and we're talking about business credit use. So, let's dive right back in here. So, before the break, we were talking about using it to put um, property, using it to put um, automobiles in your company name, and some of the benefits and fallbacks of doing so, right? So let's talk about a big thing, and that's growing your business. Growing your business through the use of business credit is essential in the early days, I believe. So let's look at it from this perspective. And Let's say, for example, um, you're starting a business. We're going to call it <clears throat> ABC, right? So you're starting this new business, ABC. Well, the business doesn't have any clients yet or any customers. And so everything is coming out of your pocket, right? Now, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Rather than just spend money out of your pocket on this business, give your business a loan, right? Open up a business bank account. Let's start with that. And then when you deposit <clears throat> deposit funds into it from your personal uh, checking account or whatever you do, Write it in as a loan that is going to be repaid back to you, okay? Now you're not losing that income because as the income comes back into the business, it can legitimately be repaid back to you as a business loan, all right? So uh, as a business loan repayment, okay? So that's a great situation for you because you're not going to lose that money. However, if you do it that way, you can't exactly take the tax right off on your personal taxes, for doing it unless you wait until the next after the filing in order to in order to um, repay the loan right so these are important things to note and if you want to add interest in there for that loan you can do that but remember that's going to also um, give you a gain so take it easy on doing that <laughs> So let's talk about building up that credit now. So as you're building that credit, you need to have vendors that work with you, right? Another awesome thing to do to build your business is to use other people's money to build your business, right? And what I'm talking about right now is terms. I'm talking about getting set up to do business on terms with different vendors, with different creditors. So um, let's say, for example, ABC Company... Uh, needs to buy supplies in order to make whatever product they're going to make and sell it on the market. You can go to the supplier then and establish a business account, right? And you can get them to put it under your business name with your DUNS number, your tax ID number for the business, and, and set you up properly 
right? And then the, what they're doing is they're going to hopefully, if you set it up correctly, they can extend terms to your business, right? When they do that, now they're saying you can go ahead and buy the supplies you need today for free and then pay us for them later. So that gives you time. Now that could be 30 days. That could be 90 days. You know, that's going to be between your negotiation skills with that particular vendor, right? But so um, this gives you time to use those supplies to build the things that you're going to build, sell the things that you're going to sell, make the money out of it, and then pay for it after you use it. So you're using other people's money to pay for things, right? Now, if you're the vendor in that situation, maybe you have a company who is um, offering those those uh, pay later services to your clients, or maybe you have a company now and you don't do that for your for your customers, but you're thinking, wow, what a great way to make more sales if I could just tell them, go ahead and pay me later, right? I can have a lot of companies uh, added into my client list, right, all of a sudden. So if you want to do that and you don't know how to do that, give me a call over at Atlas and we'll help you with that, okay? Just go to atlasforthewin.com and set an appointment. So... I can get it set up for you in order to give you the freedom to do that in your business and still not have to wait for your money, right? Because you can still, you once you invoice that customer, you can get paid the next day for your invoice instead of waiting 30, 30 60, 90 days, whatever you set your terms at for him to pay you later. But on, on the payor side, right, if you're the one who's using that credit this great for you and your business, right? Because it, it frees up your own personal capital so you don't have to keep making more loans to your business, right? But on top of that, it's now building your business credit because this cat is going to report how well you pay your bills to Dun & Bradstreet, to Experian and Business, to... Um, Equifax business, they're going to report that. And you should ask them, do you report? Okay, because not all businesses do. So you could get set up to do this, which is beneficial for you anyway, because it frees up cash flow, right? You can go ahead and get set up to do this, and it's beneficial to you anyway. But not all companies report to the bureaus. So if you're setting up a trade line like this, and they're not reporting it to them, to the bureaus, it's not going to benefit you as far as building your business credit, right? Now, it's also important to note that you better be making some profit, right? Because if they're reporting to the business credit bureaus that you have so much available credit line and that so much available credit line is used, and yes, you might be paying your bills, but... Do you pay them on time? Are you paying just a little bit? Are you paying exactly what's owed or nothing more? These little things go into that Paydex um, score, right? And Dun & Bradstreet is going to say, well, there's a high risk that this company's not going to make it, right? And remember, 97% don't. So Dun & Bradstreet is always looking on the negative side. You've got to convince them the, of the other, right? You have to convince them that you will make it. And that's hard to do. It's not easy. It's hard to do. So you're going to see harsh numbers uh, originally, and they're going to take a little while to filter back up to where you want them to be. Okay? So you may be saying, well, how do I do this? I'm like, so let's say, for example, and, and here's something a lot of people don't know. You can go to crazy places like Amazon, and you can do this. So I'm sure you have an Amazon account like everybody on the planet seems to these days. Uh, I know I use Amazon all the time because they're fast and efficient, right? And that's why they're popular, right? If I need something for my business, let's say, for example, I need um, 3D printer spools, right? Plastic. And um, and I'm running out because in my business, I make I make models 
for inventions that I work on and stuff like that. So I use my 3D printer to do that. And I use it as as a business expense. So I set up a business account with Amazon. And then, and a lot of people don't know that you can do this. You can also set up to buy it now and pay them later on 30-day terms. Okay? So they will extend you a credit line based on your business uh, revenue. And you can go from there. So if you need to buy supplies and you need them in a hurry and you don't have time for somebody to take two weeks to deliver something, order it on Amazon. It, it, it could be cheaper anyway to do it that way. Get it with your business prime account, which you can write off on your taxes, uh, the cost of that. And then you can, um, you can get that done. You can get the, that supply that you need right away usually within two business days, right? Or even one business day today. Um, I've had them deliver things on a Sunday. I was like, what? Get out of here. Who's who's doing that? Who's working on a Sunday, right? Um, but uh, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about Amazon delivering on a Sunday. <laughs> but seriously, um, you can have them deliver it. And then you don't have to pay for it for 30 days. So you can purchase it. Let's say, for example, maybe you don't even have any cash right now because you've been buying everything up to start your business. You've been incurring legal fees and all these fees and blah, blah, blah. And you're behind a little bit and you still got bills to pay, but you need to buy supplies for your business. What do you do? Buy them through Amazon. Buy them through another merchant. Buy them through somebody who can set you up on terms and then you're using your business's credit to, to establish that and get you up and running, right? Back in the day, um, you know, I know a person who told me the stories and they said, you know what? They went to the bank and they said, here, we have purchase orders in our hand for like a million dollars worth of stuff. And we just need a small loan in order to buy the supplies so that we can make the product and get it to them. And the banks would look at them and say, we're not in business to put you in business. You're crazy. You know what I mean? If you don't have the supplies to, to build the stuff, what are you trying to sell it for? You know, the world has changed, my friends. The world has changed. We're in a different place today than we were back then. Okay. So people are selling everything before they make it now. And I totally, totally agree with that philosophy sell it now make it and ship it later okay or find somewhere to buy it and ship it later as the middleman there's drop ship companies there's all sorts of things all of this stuff can build your business reputation and can, can build your business credit and the reason why you want to build that business credit is because it gives you legitimacy it gives you um, a little bit of negotiation power. But more importantly, it gives you stability. Cash flow gives you stability. All right? Now, what's another thing that gives you stability? Sales, right? And you can't have sales unless you have um, a way to get in front of your customers or your clients, right? So that's when you need to advertise and that's when you need to find creative ways to get yourself in front of them and things like that. Okay, so you need to set up accounts under your business, not under your personal name, to do that. And why do I say that? Because you don't need to be the one to pay for everything, right? Let the business pay for it. You can write off all of these business expenses on your taxes. So at the end of the... Okay, here's a great example. Donald Trump. Everybody and their cousin seemed to get in such an uproar over Donald Trump, the billionaire, only paying like, I don't know, I think it was like 78 bucks or something like that for his taxes one year, right? But that's normal. Okay, that's normal. Because if you have a business and your business may make money, it may be a profitable business, 
but you have tremendous losses along the way. You can write off those losses, and they come out of the tax liability that you owe. So even if you owe, you know, even if you've made a fortune, right, if you've lost a fortune as well, and it's going to average out, you may not owe any damn taxes. <laughs> there are ways to do that. There are loopholes out there. And when it comes to uh, personal taxes and business taxes, okay, these things are vastly different, okay? I encourage you to get a uh, accountant to help you with it, somebody who understands tax code in, in um, not only in your state but also federal, and somebody who understands business tax code because they are vastly different, okay? There are benefits that you can get on the business side that you'll never get on your personal side, okay, on your individual tax return. So why do you think business leaders are doing so well? It's not because they just make all the money and nobody else can make money. Anybody can make money. That's a beautiful thing about America, you know. I mean, you can, like, trip on a sidewalk and, you know, you probably tripped over a bag of money because there's so much of it avail available, right? But the key is, how much do you keep? Business tax side helps you keep it, okay? Not just make it, but keep it. That's the trick to business, okay? Because if you take, let's say, for example, $368,000 when I made last year, um, if I took that as personal um, income, it would have killed me in taxes. But I didn't do that. So <laughs> I got some good tax write-offs that were beneficial to me because I did things differently. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm encouraging you to do things differently. Hey, folks, this has been fun. This is going to wrap up our segments on business credit. And their benef and its benefit for your companies. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. There's more to it than I had time to go into here. We only have a half hour show, but there are things that I encourage you to look into representation. Don't just try to go it on your own. At least at a minimum, do your own research. Okay, because rules change from moment to moment in this country. Also, that's one thing that you need to be aware of. And every state does things differently. So what might work in my state may not work in yours. So bear those things in mind. Get somebody who's competent with your laws to help you with these things as you get them set. All right? For the Leader Tree, I am Chris Miller. And I just want to remind you that every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, we are here at TW3 Radio. That's TW3Radio.com. Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. And I hope that you tune in because we have a lot of cool things that we talk about. Sometimes we go and we talk to other business leaders. Other times we tell you important stuff like this. And sometimes we talk about things that you can do to build your own personal um, worth on the, in your business, right? So things like that, we go through and help you become better leaders. That's what we're all about. And if you need to, you can always get more information. Feel free to contact me at any time. Just go to atlasforthewin.com. That's atlasforthewin.com. And you can set an appointment to chat with me right there. You can also check out the things that we've got going on that can help your business grow. Right? We build business credit. We also will help you get out of problems that have already been established for your business. Uh, we can also help you get established in order to uh, finance your invoices, right? So that you can start offering the buy now, pay later option to your, to your customers and you can get more sales. That's an influx of cash. And then we can have one of our banking partners pay for it for you so that you don't have to take any hits on it. All right. There's a lot of cool things we do over at Atlas Business Consulting. Give us a call. Check us out. AtlasForTheWin.com. And I look forward to seeing you there.